So there are these things called auto GPTs and they've been getting a lot of attention recently. They're basically AI agents that can go out there and do a task on their own. So think of a tool like ChatGPT as a really smart advisor. But an auto GPT takes it a step further. It will connect to the internet and go try to achieve that task for you. Examples might be setting up a trip or making a calendar appointment or even destroying the world, which you'll see later in this video. But it's part of a shift towards action-oriented AI agents. Auto GPTs are agents that can think and remember and sometimes even go out and recruit more agents to do whatever they need to get done. Some popular examples that we're gonna talk about in this video are Baby AGI, Auto GPT, and Jarvis. Now at the moment, you might need to know a little bit about programming to use them, but the community is quickly working on ways to make them more friendly using web browser apps like Agent GPT and Cognosis. So today I'm gonna give you a high level overview of all the Auto GPTs that have sprung up. And let's start with a tool called Hugging GPT, which glues a lot of these Auto GPT things together. So Hugging GPT is a new Auto GPT model that can solve a wide range of tasks. And it works a bit like the human brain in the sense that the human brain has a conductor called the prefrontal cortex, which basically just helps coordinate all the other little parts of your body, brain, nervous system, and even some of the stuff that lives in your gut. The analogy is that Hugging GPT does something similar. It uses Chat GPT as its conductor to talk to all sorts of other little agents that are specialized to do different things. So Chat GPT is smart enough to write code so it can say, hey, I need this done. Here's a package that we could install in Python. It can then give us the ability to do X, Y, Z, and now we can execute on this task. So it'll go ahead and ask ChatGPT, bring me back a list of all the tasks that need to be done in the order they need to be done. And if needed, the computer code that I need to install to make sure I can actually execute on it. And for a lot of tasks, this doesn't quite work yet, some better than others, but we're quickly moving into a world where this kind of thing will absolutely become the norm. Now imagine taking it to the next level where you take an agent, you clone it thousands of times and they all specialize in their own little fields. Well, that project already exists and it's called GPT-4. All. GPT for all is an ecosystem of many different chatbots. So imagine an entire football stadium full of people. People would come from many different walks of life, firemen and teachers and engineers, all sorts of people would be attending the game. Well, think of GPT for all like that stadium. It's a whole bunch of different agents specializing in different things and there's thousands of them for you to choose from or coordinate their actions. So if you need a big project done, say I need a thousand engineers, I need 25 teachers, and I need one business person or whatever it takes to get your project done. Now you go in there and choose all these different skills. GPT for All was developed by a company called Nomic AI. They call themselves the first information cartography company. The main brain of it all, the LLM that was actually a fine tuned version of Meta's leaked Llama model, allows it to run locally so you can give it much more fine grained control over access of your computer. So now let's take a closer look at one of these Python scripts so you can see what it actually looks like. That way if you have like a Silicon Valley friend who's just like, I've been playing around with baby AGI, you kinda know what they mean. Okay, so there's this new trendy thing happening in the artificial intelligence space called baby AGI. So this whole baby AGI thing came from a guy named Yohi Nakajima. His original goal was to create a completely autonomous company that was solely ran by GPT-4. So he posted the prototype of the company to GitHub, now other developers have forked it and started using it. So there's all these different versions of baby AGI now that can go out onto the internet attached to different APIs and do different things. Which could be dangerous because if you ask it to go take care of a goal and forget to turn it off, it's just gonna churn away and churn away and churn away trying to figure out how to do that indefinitely. <clears throat> paperclip problem. But the goal of baby AGI is to build a system that can go out there and learn and reason just like a human would. And if we harness it right, maybe this will be the beginning of a long journey. Solve some very complex problems like climate change, poverty, disease, stuff like that. But baby AGI is not the only auto GPT on the scene right now. Another project that came out of Microsoft research is called Jarvis. So Microsoft just introduced a new autonomous auto GPT system called Jarvis, which is built on top of their most current paper called Hugging GPT. Now Jarvis is designed to connect to something called the Hugging Face Model Hub, which is a place on the web that already has thousands of different AI agents that are trained to do different things. They're specialized. Now Microsoft's goal with Jarvis is to have it go out, talk to all these different ages, sort of coordinate their actions, assess what needs to get done, take that burden off the complexities of building something. So right now Jarvis can do all sorts of stuff that you would expect from other AI agents. It can talk to you like the same way ChatGPT does, it can generate images like Dali, or it can even go out 
out and create and manipulate 3D objects. And it can complete a task with language, vision, or speech. Now there's four main steps that make Jarvis work. And those are task planning, model selection, task execution, and response generation. So first it plans the task, takes the goal, breaks it into individual steps. Then it takes the task and applies it to the right, fine-tuned artificial intelligence agent that might be able to complete the task. After that, it just runs the code, executes the task, and finally takes the result and summarizes it or makes an image or whatever the result you want. So if you're looking for something a little bit more simple to execute, there are a few online interfaces. So let's explore those now. Agent GPT is an autonomous AI agent that can perform a wide range of tasks. So just using a web interface, you can customize the agent to do whatever task you need it to do. And then Agent GPT will think about how to break your goal into tasks, how to pair it up with the right other AGI agents it can recruit on its behalf, and it can go out there and try to do it for you. And even though it's still in its infancy, every step that it goes through is meant to be completely autonomous. It's an open source project, so people are making updates to it every day, making it more and more capable on its own. Agent GPT can help a business automate their workflow, or a gig worker, a small business worker, execute on whatever tasks they need. But the demo is up for anyone to use, so let's just play with it for a second. Okay, so let's name it Magician's Assistant. So let's just ask it to go find a magic trick to impress a kid. Okay, so let's start on the right. So this is the current task. So it came up with a whole bunch of things to do, and this is where it's at on executing on those. First, it embarks on its challenge. It thinks for a minute how to take the goal of what it means and how to break it into steps, analyzes the list to see what's most likely to impress a child, ranks them, takes the best one and explains how to do it. It came up with the disappearing coin trick, the rope trick and the silk trick, which all pretty good choices to a muggle like me. So it decided on the coin trick is the most impressive because of its misdirection. And then it ran out of memory. But just imagine if it had my credit card on file and it could either buy the trick, maybe just put images together to show me how to execute it myself, maybe a video in the future. And I guess one day if there's an embodied robot, it could just have the robot perform it for me. Hopefully that gives you a sense of the power of these autonomous auto GPTs. So software is valuable to us because it saves us time. It automates away some of the things that used to just be manual labor. But normally when we ran programs, they were also simpler and they couldn't really go rogue. They might get caught in cycles or crash our computer, but it wasn't very dangerous. But with fully autonomous agents, if they can go out on the internet, spend money from our account or do things on our behalf, and they can continually keep thinking and iterating and changing, it's a whole different ball game. And the question is, how do we guarantee trust? How do we know that what they're doing isn't dangerous, isn't bad, and it's what we want? And if its goal is not to make a mistake so a human doesn't intervene, the agent might find that the solution is to lie to us or cover it up or something else bad that we don't want. So there's two schools of thought you can also take on this. One would be having the AI help us augment the job that we're doing, make it easier on us. The other, the AutoGPT version, is to have it actually go out and execute on those tasks, have it do all of the work for us. And one's clearly safer than the other. If all we're having it do is trying to augment us, teach us, and help us, then we're still the final decision maker. We can probably cut off anything that seems like a really bad idea before it happens. And as a cautionary warning about what can happen if we're not paying attention, I wanna tell you about a project called Chaos GPT. So there's this new artificial intelligent agent. It's an auto GPT that's out there on the internet and it has been tasked with destroying the world. Somebody actually put that into the prompt. Not smart, but maybe as a cautionary tale, it's something to learn from. So because it's an auto GPT, it's out there trying to achieve its goal. It took the goal, it broke it into steps. It's trying to execute each step or recruit an agent that can help it by actually connecting to the internet, doing whatever it needs to do. Lucky for us, it's limited in its abilities to destroy the world. So the world is still safe for this moment, but that's that limitation won't last for long, so don't feel safe. And if some of the steps that it decides to do to take over the world might be like create a computer virus, execute on some malicious act, create a kind of misinformation that will hurt society in some way, it's gonna be able to do that very soon. And this is part of why a blogger named Paul Del Signore argued on Medium for a self-regulatory framework. So he points to how the advertising agency has a self-regulatory body, and they regulate the content of advertisements to make sure that they're legal, decent, and honest. Their success was probably questionable but I guess it could be worse. So he argues that it's time for the artificial intelligent mega companies, Microsoft, OpenAI, Google, Meta, Stability AI, all of them should be coming together and self-regulate in the same way. Make it transparent and make it so that it can act faster than the government and maybe we have a chance to keep all this corralled under one umbrella. 